Hello, my name is Jessica Lloyd, and this is my poetry presentation. The Loretti poet that I had cho that I've chosen is Natasha Trethewey. She is a the United States poet Loretti, as well as the poet laureate of Mississippi, which I, uh, I noticed she references Mississippi in a lot of her poems. So she must uh, possibly live there. Uh, she also has won a Pulitzer Prize for poetry in two thousand seven for her collection on Native Guard. I actually don't know much about poetry, so um, I'm not sure how well I'll do this, but um, I'll try my best. Um, Trethaway, from the work that I noticed, has a lot of dark depths in her writing. Lines like there's no going home or a dialect of dark and light seem prominent in how she relates what is on her heart to the world. And it's uh, about the things from her heart and life. I believe memories and hidden secret. I believe it's also about memories and hidden secrets that she is letting out in her writing. There are so several poems that uh, stru stuck out to me, but I'll co concentrate on three. The first one that stood out to me is her poem on the theories of time and space. It reads, "You can get there from here, though there's no going home. Everywhere you go, will there. Everywhere you go will be somewhere you'll ne you've never been." Try this. Head south on Mississippi 49, one by one mile markers ticking off. Another minute of your life. Follow this to its natural conclusion, dead end at the coast, the pier at South Gulf Port, where rings of shrimp boats are th loose stitches in a sky-threatening rain. Cross over the man-made beach, 26 miles of sand dumped on, the, on a mangrove swamp, buried terrain of the past. Bring only what you must carry, tomb of memory, its random blank pages. On the dock where you board the boat from ship o for Ship Island, someone will take your picture. The photograph, who you were, will be waiting when you return. And it sounds like an odd story to me. Well, actually it sounds like her routine when she wants to uh, write poetry. She's going a specific length across a, a specific highway to an area which she knows very well, I believe. She's seen it a lot, able to describe it well, and um, I think that th it's her way of uh, getting out and releasing who she was, because a lot of her writing, it feels so dark and depth with so much in it that how she was able to write it, I believe there's a moment of vulnerability, so she's I think she's going to a secluded spot to write this, and she's only bringing what appears to be a blank journal to write in, and once she's let out a lot of her writing, that's when she comes back and she can be herself, that's, and that's and not no longer vulnerable. That's sort of what I believe. Uh, but she puts a, a lot of... Uh, hidden meanings in her writing, I believe. But there's another poem that I also noticed, and it was uh, Pilgrimage. Here the Mississippi carved its mud-dark paths, a, gar a graveyard of skelet for skeletons of sunken river boats. Here the river changed its course, turning away from the city as one turns, forgetting from the past the abandoned bluffs, land sloping up above the river's bend, where now the Yazoo's fills the Mississippi's empty bed. Here the dead stand up in stone, white marble of Confederate Avenue. I stand on ground once hollowed by a web of caves. They must have seemed like catacombs. In 1863, to the woman sitting in her parlor, candlelight candle underground, I can see her listening to shells explode, writing herself into history, asking what is to become of all things in this place. This whole city is a grave. Every sp spring pil pilgrimage, the living come to mingle with the dead, brush against their cold shoulders in the long hallways, listen all night to their silence and indifference, relieve their dying in the green battlefield. At the museums, we marvel at their clothes pre preserved under glass, so much smaller than our own, as if those who wore them were only children. We sleep in their beds, the old mansions, hunkered on the bluffs, draped in flowers, funeral, a blur of petals against the river's gray. The brochure in my room calls it this living history, 
The brass plate on the door reads Prissy's room. A window frame frames the river's crawl towards the gulf. In my dreams, the ghost of history lies down beside me, rolls over, pins me beneath a heavy arm. I think this is one of her longer poems because of the stories that I of the poems that I read, they seemed a little shorter. But I, I think the length was needed because it very well describes the a museum of what I believe is Confederate history. Um, uh, possibly, she talks. I believe she talks about graveyards as well. Um, the line that says. Uh, uh, hear the dead stand up in stone. I believe that's a graveyard that she talks about. And uh, I suppose there's also historic hotels that she's staying in with uh, possibly themes of different people. Uh, it's interesting how she goes... It's, it's also very dark, like a lot of her writing with talks of skeletons and uh, the whole city is a grave and I'm not sure what she experienced she was expecting when going to this ho historic hotel but I'm not sure if it was a good one considering it ends with uh, the ghost of history lies down beside me rolls over and pins, pins me beneath a heavy arm I think that might not be a very healthy sleep but uh, overall it's a very descriptive poem and uh, kind of like it uh, but you know not all of our stories I read were dark uh, there was one that I found that sounded like a positive memory from childhood it was called flounder here she said put this on your head she handed me a hat you about as wide as your dad you gotta stay like that Aunt Sugar rolled her nylons down around e each bony ankle, and I rolled down my white knee socks, let my thin legs dangle, circling them above the water, and sil silverbacks my nose, flitting here and there between the sunspots and the shadows. This is how you hold the pole. She cast the line out straight. Now put, in now put that worm on, on your hook. Throw it out and wait. She sat spitting tobacco juice into a coffee cup, hunkered down with what when she felt the bite, jerked the pole straight up. Reeling and tugging hard at the fish that wriggled and tried to fight back. A flounder, she said, and you can tell, cause one of its sides black. The other is white, she said, and landed, it landed with a thump. I stood there watching the fish flip-flop, switch sides with every jump. Uh, it seems like a, when I first read it, it seemed like uh, a bit childish and sort of whimsical of the past. With her Aunt Sugar and teaching her how to fish. However, it... As I keep reading it, it sort of doesn't feel, it feels more like a foggy memory because I don't see, I don't read much of the uh, emotions she had had when in this memory. Because it feels more like she's barely remembering it through a foggy window, just knowing what she did and what was said and how it happened, not what she felt how it happened. Which was interesting, I suppose. Um, and I, I, I remember when I first learned how to fish, so uh, it's it's it definitely feels like she's an outsider in her own memory, sort of uh, foggy. Um, a lot of what her writing is is sort of depressing really. It sort of feels dark and lonely and not something that I quite enjoy but it's an interesting perspective and uh, I suppose that's it.